he's a nice person and he doesn't always have much to say I thought I would um, submit a uh, complaint to the government can think of worse ways to spend the morning here in uh, late April of 2022. I submit this complaint to any individual who votes, monitors citizens' views, back checks or garage rocks without any undue hesitation my remarks are uh, answerable and in the spirit of transparency what happened in my opinion that I ended up being targeted by so many viperous, dishonest, leveraged, indecent, incessant, obnoxious, ferocious, militant enemies. Completely unprovoked is probably the Vietnam War. How these lopers go about reasoning was made clear to me many times listening to them drone in the city of Pittsburgh. The idea works like this. If you opposed the Vietnam War, you're insulting every God-fearing serviceman who did his duty. Further, you don't understand the nature of reality. You think you are deserving of being coddled. You're deserving of being sheltered when you're just a whining little nothing whose zygote became a person due to the atom bomb. You have cruelly and dishonestly subverted the patriotic glory of the Star Spangled Banner. And it's up to us, the people who were backstabbed by November criminals like yourself, to whoop you and humiliate you in turn, to teach you not only the nature of reality, but to fear God and never to joke so that you will be ash in face. and a tribute to the greater glory of Yoko Ono, who owns you. And towards this end, they came up behind me when I was 12 years old and smashed my head in with slaughtering blows. Left me partially blinded. Death subjected me to a nerve agent. Stalked me. Murdered Cersei Kennedy. Raped my deaf advocate closed the school when I was about to get my bachelor's degree, contracted attack prostitutes through oligarchs in Hollywood, and squeezed me from paintings that they knew to be worth much more than I was being paid for them. All because a couple of ruthless, despicable NAM veterans had friends in rock and roll who wanted to work with them on a special weird project 
so weird that nobody dares admit that it even happened. That's how weird it is. And they expect me to accept invisible nobody status. They expect me to let them erase my acumen, torture my psyche, steal my girlfriends without a word of defense of myself. They expect me to practice what I preach by turning all of my life's hard-earned work over to the people whose mission is no less than an extermination program from the Third Reich. Doing it better, they say. Israeli merchants of death like Oliver Stone, who has no patience with lame, simpering 35-year-old and 25-year-old playing all big when they got no guts and no sense of, I mean, I've never seen such a retarded self-lampoon of Jack Nicholson than I did when Oliver Stone was bantering about the Ukraine situation. I mean, what a noxious fool he made himself out to be. The only thing he didn't say was, truth, you can't handle the truth. And now we have people capping on the Ministry of Fact-Checking as though it's Orwellian to protect people from lies. What do you think has been being done to the mind of this society? What has been been done to this mind of this society is the media has broadcast the freedom of speech is the right to tell any fib, any lie, any exaggeration, while covering for terrible cruelty, sadism, assassination, serial killing, snuff film syndicates, genocide porno. And this allows an international cartel from Europe to say, you are what we say you are. And hot wire in. Hey, the more the merrier. You can tell that these Trumpy tuned stooges with Tulsi Gabbard are speaking Russian by the English they speak. They're constantly saying, oh, you think we won't, you think we won't. And they're doing something very evil and ill. And that's not Russian. What is it then? Oh, it's patriotism. Oh. How exciting. Our children can't go to school. They're afraid. Our grandparents are gone. The Axis has ridden high and avenged themselves. And the Ministry of Fact-Checking is called Orwellian. Who's afraid of fact-checking? Peter Gabriel? You bet he's afraid of fact-checking. Adrian Ballou? You bet he's afraid of fact-checking. Robert Fripp? He's so afraid of fact-checking that he gets out his fact splicer device. And bruise up analogs. What's going on? What's going on is fear of the recognition that the planet exists so all of us can survive. That when you befriend nature, nature befriends you back. Towards sabotaging this, everybody in show business, everybody in the military, Everybody in Garage Walk wants their own tarantula so they can make the girls scream and then jump down hold pee pee on the Fern Hollow Bridge and say, see, see, it's the nature of reality. See, child, to Mark Nordenberg. We want the money. We want the money. Don't you see what it is? It's pitiful. You fools have no escalation dominance worthy of the name except the corrupt destructiveness that you think endows you 
with forces that are almighty. It's 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 pitiful. There's not there's no other word I can think in the human vocabulary that more captures my feelings when I see someone like Donald Trump espousing his brilliance while the planet is suffering this way. He goes about buttering his toast and saying, I'm smart. Pitiful. And you dragged me into international affairs. You said, don't talk like a Pittsburgh garage rocker in international affairs. Well, don't drag somebody who doesn't want to be involved in international affairs out into the international daylight. Okay, well, you did it. Now, here I am. What do you want me to say to you? What I want to say is really very simple. Cease fire, negotiate, and try to realize that it's not worth it to destroy the planet. Try to get it through your head. That's not worth it to become gross, feckless ignoramuses in the eyes of history. And if there's a God, certainly in the eyes of, um, let's just say, reflections in the mirror mirror. How sad. How sad that you hated school so badly that you would do something this bitter to your own children. Because that's what I was when they tortured me. A trusting public school student. Jimmy Crary was enrolled in a Pittsburgh public school. Dr. Proctor was one of these wizards of knowledge who would never forgive my father for what he felt led to the suicide of a NAM veteran. And so the devil white paid the price. What kind of mentality is that? To bring to the table about a Pittsburgh public school child chewing his fingernails bloody, pleading for his life, being battered, ending up disabled, in plain view after disappearing for months after complaining in the principal's office that with whom he had cooperated about thefts from the school saying he was going to be killed disappearing for a month and nobody even investigated because behind the scenes he was the double weight getting what double weights get when their fathers cross them veterans, man. Is that what happened? You know, I had one of these warlords from the NAACP bitterly contest my right to tell about two very brave young men who were black, who rescued me from an armed gang of Klansmen. It was still registers on me that this took place. Because he said, you're trying to subvert the paradigm. What's this supposed to mean? I'm supposed to, the paradigm is that I'm a racist who can never appreciate black men. Oh. That must wake you up screaming. Don't help him. Don't help him. He's awake. He's awake. This is what our society is becoming. You disabled me. And then you complained that I'm disabled. It, 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 it's so sour that people don't understand. You say, oh, well, the Jews were persecuted by Hitler. And when you don't even know what Hitler was. The motherfucker, he came after everything that was honest. It's surreal to see you justifying all of these terrifying lies as anti-Hitlerism. It really is. That's genuinely scary. So when somebody comes along and says, fuck you, it translates in your moral paradigm decipher to get well. 